Let's get this party started. Unreal turtle? No, we. <laughs> yeah, right? Come on. <coughs> we did that. Everybody open up an internet browser. Oh, no. Today we're going to do a little something different. Oh, I found that. Ooh, I'm excited. All right. Uh, go to Google. Google. So I search Why not Google Bing? Right, Forget Bing. That never hey, look, works. it's Steve Irwin. I prefer Yahoo. Yeah. Yahoo. Yeah. All right, everybody Google uh, free 3D crocodile model. Crocodiles are so overrated. Damn! <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about this project. Please don't. All right. Nah, you can do it. I don't care. Yeah, so this is the project that we're working on in uh, Project Dev, and um, in this project, so we're going to reference this project throughout the um, the rigging term here. But basically, in this project, you can switch between three different characters. Whoa, jump does that, huh? You can switch between. Yeah, you can switch between an army man, a horse, which isn't finished yet. And a Jack in the Box. Oh, nice Jack in the Box. You guys know that we did the Jack in the Box in here. Yeah. Um, we're going to be changing that up, actually, the way we did that. The top half of Mr. Jack is going to be a grappling hook. Um, this is what the Jack looks like. And we did some blend shape stuff with him. Oh, what the? God, this is so messed up, man. I don't know how they screwed this up so bad, but. <laughs> Did they actually screw it up again? I, man, I don't even know. But basically the concept of this game is so you're the soldier, the horse, and the jack in the box, and you can switch between the three. Yeah. They each have different abilities. Yeah. Um, the jack in the box can stretch and grab onto stuff and pull himself over like a grappling hook. The horse can run, jump, and then the soldier can like push, pull, and I think we're gonna add this guy a gun because we just recently added a bunch of enemies. Here's some of the enemies here. One of them is a fly. Another one is a truck. We've got like an alligator, which is what we're going to be doing today. And a bunch of other stuff. So um, usually what I do is we'll be doing a lot of the work in rigging um, from the project dev classes. So yeah. Anyway, that being said, uh, let's go ahead and get this crocodile. So if you Google free 3D crocodile model, free 3D crocodile model. You're going to see the first link here which says cadnav.com 3D crocodile. Go ahead and download that. And everybody also fire up Maya. What? what? So this link here. This link right here. So click on that and then down at the bottom you're going to see a crocodile. This one here with the controls on it. Me and Raphael found this one yesterday. Yeah, crocodile rig. That's it. Go ahead and download that, and there should be a Maya file in there. Open that up in Maya. But which Maya file? This one right here. Should be a little download button right here. Six point nine megabytes. Click download on that, and then there's a download URL. <coughs> when you download that, that's going to be in your downloads directory. You need to extract that file. So right, it's going to be a RAR file. Does anybody in here know what a RAR file is? RAR XD? A RAR is kind of like zip file. So right click on it, extract here. RAR. That's right. And there's a Maya file in there. Go ahead and open up that Maya file. Use Chrome. Chrome. Damn. Oh. Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin. That's my. If you look at the Google Doodle today. Heck? Raphael, which is the file with the controls that actually work? Oh, hello. Move. Where is the move? 
Hey, Raphael. Uh, the, that should be the same gator, is it not? I freaking feel like last time there was a file where the... Because see how the bones are outside of them? See that? Oh, no, because even on the other one, the, the bones were always there. They were just hidden. That's the issue that I was having last time here. I feel like... Oh, weird. This is so weird. Are you on Chrome? Yeah, I'm on Chrome. Uh, click the up arrow. Join folder. My bro. Right click. Set it up. It's right here. Nice. Nice. Sorry. I'm starting to shit over there. So hot. Oh, you're making them play the wires. Press the bell. No. 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 Alright, everybody got the crocodile open? Who are we uh, waiting on? You got the wrong. You got the right Maya open. Yeah. No, I opened the wrong one at first, and then I opened it. There is a Maya file in there. Make sure you open the Maya file. Also, when you <coughs> download the RAR file, you might not have heard what I was saying because everybody's talking. But you gotta, you gotta. First of all, you gotta go file open and open the file. You can't double click the file. Second of all, you have to extract the file that you download. That RAR file, right click on it and go to 7-zip. Extract all, okay. So everybody take a look at this model here. What do y'all see? Uh, circles. Circles? And what are those circles, What are those circles for? Wait, you like grass? Pay attention. You like the blue crocodile thing or something like that. What are those circles for? Anybody know? Yeah, these these circles. Have y'all have y'all tried to grab one of those and rotate it? Yeah, these circles are controls for this thing. Okay. That's how you control the crocodile. Um, so what we're gonna do is, I need this crocodile in my project. I need this crocodile in my life. So. Okay. Okay. I know a good psychiatrist. So let's go ahead and get this crocodile in my life. We waiting on anybody? Y'all finally get it open? Maria. I finally got it open. Uh, Maria. Maria. Oh, I found <laughs> Are we still waiting on somebody? Damn! The whole class is waiting on you. Come on, fam. We're waiting. <laughs> Time's a ticket. 
File open? Yeah, it's open now. Damn. Wow. Mine's over. I wanna use that that one Oh, uh, wait a minute. Oh no. Did you get the wrong one? Hold on, let me try this. It's one. easy to forget things. Oh, you gotta do this all over again? Oh man, that Wow, you gotta click a download link? Oh my god. Oh man, oh man. Not again. Oh, hey man, that shit takes not forever. Nice. <laughs> not nice. Not nice. Not nice. Is that how it Alright, I got good news and bad news. What do you want first? The bad news. The bad news? The bad news. I like it how Maria calls me bro. Yeah, bro. No, bro. Mom, bro. Thank you yeah, bro. very much. Bro. I love it. All right. You're bro. 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 broski. We're waiting, bro. Come on, broski. I think I made y'all download the wrong file. Oh, no. no. So we downloaded a bunch of malware, right? I waited an hour for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so which one do we download? Oh. Actually, they both look the exact same. Pretty sure they both are the exact same. It's just oh weird, as I remember it different from yesterday. Man, y'all are sensitive. <laughs> Damn millennials. Call the police. Nah, we can keep this file open. It's the same. Hey, man, they're just different. Oh, sensitive. You would get scared. I want to do that one crocodile and just go all the way to the bottom. <laughs> that <laughs> the cartoony one? one? The cartoony one? Yeah, the one in the middle. Oh, great. <laughs> what? That crocodile is supposed to be cartoony. That's right, it is. Why is it that like updates on your computer pop up at the most unopportune time? Oh my god. Wow. Nice. Installing update. Crash. Whatever you're doing, crash. We need to update your computer. Good lord. No. Maria? No offense. It's it's the uh, pop up thing that you were complaining about. Pop up. Pop up. I think you guys have the right, fight, right, right file. Nice. It doesn't matter. They're all the same. There's 50 copies of the same file in here. 
All right. Um. So everybody, hit play on your key on your uh, down in the bottom right here. Tell me what you see. Damn. Right click on the play button. He goes super fast. All right. Yeah. So y'all's are going super fast. Mine's going a little slower because I already fixed it. But down at the bottom right hand corner, you'll see like a little running man where it says animation preferences. Guys, please, please try not to sing or talk during my lectures because it's like impossible for people to hear. Um, yeah, click on the animation settings button. It's a little running man in the bottom right hand corner. And then under where it says playback, you'll see playback speed. Change that to other and then change it to 30 frames per second and then yeah and while you're in the settings um other no 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 where is it hit other put 30 other while you're in settings um under settings where it says animation there's another where it says evaluation mode, change that from parallel to DG. Which is very, very important. All right, so two settings we're changing, all right? The first one is under settings animation where it says evaluation, change evaluation mode from uh, parallel to DG. <coughs> And then the second one is under time slider, change the playback speed to other 30 frames per second, and then click save. Then when you hit play, this guy should be playing at a reasonable, a reasonable speed. Okay. All right, so we need to like make some adjustments to this animation here. Um, so this animation is controlled with these curves. If you notice when you click on the curves, um, you can see the red animation ticks on the time bar down below. The curves are the blue circles, okay? And um, we need to go ahead and select all the, and th those are called control curves. We need to select all those, but there's bones that are showing. So, Ugh. So go ahead and just go up to show and then turn off nerves. No, oh, I'm sorry, turn off uh, joints. Joints. That's right, Maria. Joints. So turn off joints and then there's a layer down at the bottom called X I N D E. Everybody see that layer? To the right of the P is an empty box. Double click that twice to where you see an R in there. And when you change that to R, it means reference. And what that's doing is it's setting the, the, the actual model of the crocodile is in that layer. And when you set a layer to reference, it means it's there, but you can't actually select it. So as you can see now, once we hide the bones and we change the model in the model layer to reference, if you drag a box over every single curve, it only selects the curves. That's cool. All right, so let's go ahead and select these curves. And as you can see, there's like 190. There's 190 frames in this animation. Um, I'm going to introduce you guys to the the animation graph editor. So go up to Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. Windows, Animation Editors, Graph Editor. So this is like a graph view of the animation, of all the animation. And... Um, we can actually edit this. This is just like any other 2D view in Maya. You can hold Alt and you can move around. You can zoom in and out. 
And this is how we how we edit animation data in Maya. Okay. Um, this is like my favorite tool when I was an animator. It's most mostly an animator's favorite tool. And what we're gonna do is, if you scroll along the timeline here, you'll see that uh, how many frames is the walk animation? Can anybody tell me? Forty-eight, huh? So one of the ways that you can tell is it looks like it's about 48 frames, but I'm not sure. So go ahead and change your, the end of your time slider down at the bottom to 48 frames. Keep your, gra keep your graph editor up. So if you change your time slider to 48 frames from 0 to 48 and then hit play, you can zoom in and out and watch the crocodile and you can just see if his hands and everything like loops at the end of the animation to the beginning of the animation. It looks better on 47. 47, huh? Yeah. He's right. Look at that. All right. Now that's interesting why that, that would be the case because the last frame is actually the last frame is actually 48 and we'll, f we'll figure out why that's the case here in a second. But um, So what we need to do is, alright, so we've pretty much figured out from 0 to 47, 48 is the, um, the animation, right? So let's open the graph editor here. So make sure you have all your controls selected. Drag a box over all these controls. We don't want to miss anything. And then in your graph editor, uh, since we've close it when you make sure your your final frame is 48 okay what I want you to do is drag a box over all the frames after 48 and you can select them in the graph editor and then tap delete on your keyboard del okay make sure you don't delete frame 48 you want to keep that frame okay so if you look up here you can see I've set my frame range down here to 48 and I've selected all the curves after 48. Select them and then tap DEL or delete on your keyboard. Boom. Now I'll show you guys something cool here. Um, I showed Raphael this yesterday. Um, Maya has a feature that allows you to um, basically loop animations forever. Uh, so with your graph editor open here, right now we have, as you can see, just a section of animation here. But let's go ahead and go up to, in the graph editor, edit. I'm sorry, view infinity. There's a little checkbox. It's called view infinity. And when you turn on view infinity, as you can see, before our, our keyframes here and after our keyframes here is now like infinity lines. Okay, that's that's lines of data. There's just it basically holds on those frames before <coughs> the keyframes and holds on those frames after the keyframes. Now go up to curves, and you'll see pre-infinity and post-infinity. Pre-infinity is everything before the curve. Change that to cycle, and then post-infinity is everything after the curve. Change that to cycle as well. And when you hit um, now, you can change your frame range to like. I don't know, 200. And then when you hit play, you'll see that that walking animation loops forever. So what's cool about that is you only need to make one section of looping animation, and then you can tell Maya, all right, hey, loop this forever, and Maya will just like figure out the data on its own. As you can see here, there's no keyframes, but yet it's still animating, which is pretty cool. So sometimes you have to, if you have to do long sections of animation, uh, this is a, a tool that can help you.
There's some other tools in here that are pretty helpful too. Um, there's a bunch of like key, uh, spline. So as you can see with these keyframes here, um, you have keyframes and then you have curves. Okay, these are called animation curves. And you can actually select keyframes in here. And when you select them, they create little handles. You can grab those handles and you can manipulate the curves. So sometimes if you have to make like micro adjustments to your animation, this is how you would go in there and do it. Okay, this is like a, vi a visual way to go in and like tweak stuff. For example, the ends of the animation, if you can, I want you guys to shift select the ends of the animation now. And then um, up in the, um, the little icons at the top, you'll see like a, a straight curve and then you'll see like a diagonal curve. Okay, if you click those, different curves, you can see where my, my mouse is. You can see how it changes the curve. Just click back and forth between those. It changes the end curves from being like clamped to curved. You see that? From clamped to curved. And so these, these micro adjustments to these curves make, make adjustments on the animation. So we want those to be nice and curved on the end there. So does this guy still look crappy at 48 frames or 47? Mine still doesn't look great. He looks, he looks fine at 48 for me. But at the very end, you can see like I don't see that. There is some goofiness going on. I don't know what the deal is. Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if we can try and fix that. Yeah, there's definitely something funky going on. I'm not sure. One of the ways that we can fix that is if you select all the curves, move it to frame zero, and then tap S on your keyboard. That sets a keyframe on all the curves, just to make sure. Sometimes animators, when they animate, they don't set keyframes on every single controller on every single frame. Shocker. Now what you can do is you can right-click on that keyframe, copy it, and then you can move to the end keyframe, right click, and paste, paste. And what that does, you can pick, copy and paste keyframes. So that makes sure that the end keyframe and the first keyframe are exactly the same. But I agree with you. I think that frame 47, this animation looks a lot better. All right. Can y'all find the controller that opens his mouth? Anybody find the controller that opens the guy's mouth? This thing is messed up, man. This thing is messed up. Anybody find that controller? Did your computer shut off? Yeah. Wow. That sucks. <laughs> did, I did that yesterday. Check the plug to make sure the plug is like pushed all the way in.
All right, so a couple things we want to do with this guy. The first thing is, as you notice, like he's looking down when he walks. I want to make him look up when he walks. Okay. So, see this controller over his top spine here? It's like his top spine controller. On frame zero, grab that and just rotate it up a little bit to where he's looking forward. Actually, before you do that, um, down in the bottom right hand corner is a uh, a button right next to the settings called auto keyframe. Go ahead and turn that auto keyframe on. Make sure you're at the, your end frame is 48 here. Make sure your end frame is 48. So turn on the auto keyframe. Now I want you to grab so down here at the bottom there's a little a red tick box to the next to um, the settings. When you click it it turns it on, turns it red. <coughs> It's called auto. Did your computer reboot too? Yeah, like, or the whole row rebooted? It's just these two. What? Was that English? Did the whole row, did the whole row reboot? Yeah. Yes or no? Why? Did you kick the plug? Maybe. Probably. Probably. I, you kicked the, you kicked the plug for sure. Look, your foot's <laughs> right there. <laughs> Y'all got to catch up or something. <laughs> wow, that's um, that really sucks. All right, grab this controller here on frame zero. Rotate this this guy's face up so he's looking forward. All right, like this. And then hit tap S on frame zero to make sure it's set. All right. Now I want you to copy that keyframe onto frame 24 and frame 48. So right click on it, copy. Go to frame 24 paste, frame 48, paste. So this guy's looking forward as he's walking. Nobody can... Alright, now let's move to frame 12 and I want you to rotate it down a little bit. Copy that keyframe and then move to frame I don't know, 36 and then paste that keyframe. Yep, so so what we've done is on frame 0, 24, and 48 we have rotated his head up with this controller here the one I have selected which is green rotate his head up and then on frame 12 and 36 we've rotated his head down a little bit. So when he walks, he's got this little bob thing going on, but he's looking straight ahead. All right, that looks good over there. Good job, good job. Now we're animating stuff. You got it, Maria? Can you help her, uh, Raphael? Damn, such a chore. Now for you rock stars, I want you to animate his mouth. I want his mouth open the whole time. So select a controller that opens his mouth and make sure that his mouth is open. Set some keyframes so that it's open the whole time. So figure out which controller opens his mouth and animate his mouth open the whole time. You talking about this one here? Yeah. How how wide do you open it? Ah, I can open it that way. So there's a lot of keyframes on that controller that opens it wide. So you're gonna have to like set a lot of keyframes. Um, so what you can do is instead of like changing all those keyframes, you can actually just right click on them and delete them. So just right click on all those keyframes and delete them. And then just create a little mouth animation to where his mouth is open, but just kind of moves a little bit. Keep the end keyframes of 0 and 48 for his mouth. But 
in the middle. I want his mouth open the whole time, basically. And you'll have to make sure that the end keyframes, 0 and 48, are the same frame. So you'll have to copy and paste them. I just added some random keyframes like this. It looks pretty cool. Whenever you're doing looping animations, you want to do everything that you can to make sure that they don't look like a looping animation. Yeah, that looks cool. You can add just some more keyframes in there just to give his mouth like a little... Yeah, you can add just a little bit more animation in there just to give it like a subtle. You know what I'm saying? Just little, little tiny tweaks as you go through here. Just to give it like a little bit of life. Got it, Maria? Yeah, that looks really good, man. <clears throat> Remember, there's a term in 3D gaming animation. There's good and there's good enough. Man, that ain't the truth. I don't know what is. There is good and there is good enough. Anybody's, you guys see how auto key helps you out? Anybody? Hey man, that auto key almost fucked me over. Well, here's the thing. Like, I can see why Aaron, your animation teacher, doesn't like auto key. Because if you're not paying attention, you can set a bunch of random keys. But the thing about it is, is like, pay attention. If you're an animator, it's your job. Pay attention. You know, remember the fact that you have auto key on. and you won't screw yourself up. All right, everybody got a good looking crocodile animation still working? You guys can add your little, add a little flavor to this or whatever, and in the background, go ahead and launch a new, um, Unreal third person project in the background. So fire up Unreal and launch another third person. We're going to get this guy into Unreal. Nice. Y'all breaking the game already over there? You just want a cool walking animation. So in the background, when you guys are waiting, minimize Maya, launch a new third person Unreal project. Okay? If you don't remember how to do that, you open up the Epic Games launcher and launch a new project. We're going to need that. Oh, God, yeah, I got to do 
know that update on my own really quick. <laughs> update. Update. Cookies. Cookies. Aren't you allergic to sugar? Yeah. Hey, who got sugar on them? <laughs> cookies. I love cookies. Too spicy for me, Sam. Too spicy. <laughs> All right, if you haven't done so already, please open the Epic Games Launcher and create a new third-person project. All right, cool. So now we need to export this guy. We got a walk-in animation that looks pretty cool. Um, go to Windows, uh, General Editors, Hypergraph Hierarchy. Let's take a look at the hierarchy of this model that we've downloaded off of... Um, <clears throat> offline see what we got ourselves into here a lot oh my god oh my oh my this is just a whole lot of crazy wow all right yeah this is something all right Yeah, so uh, Windows, we're going to Windows, General Editors, Hypergraph Hierarchy. So I'm opening this up because I'm just looking at the structure of this. There's just all kinds of, I don't even know what is going on around here. But if you look at the structure of this, it's we've got our joints here, root, back A, back B, chest. It's under, first of all, it's under a group, everything's under a group. Then we have some curve. And it says fit skeleton, fit skeleton offset, and then the bones. Yeah, Unreal ain't gonna like that. So really, when we export characters from Maya to Unreal, what Unreal likes is just a model and some bones. bones. A model and some bones. Okay, so we need to clean this thing off as best as possible. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and save our scene. So go to File, Save Scene As, and save this thing. All right. Now the next thing I want you guys to do is I'm going to show you a little trick here. Uh, make sure your frames, your frames are set from zero to 48. Definitely 48 is the end frame. Okay. <clears throat> then I want you to select that root joint in the hypergraph hierarchy like this. Select, yeah, select the root joint. So we're again Windows, General Editors, hypergraph hierarchy. Alright, so once the root is selected, go up to edit. Ours is totally different. No, it's not. What? It has some letters and numbers. Yeah. Okay, we'll just select. Okay, see the, how one of them is a joint, the top joint, whatever it is. Doesn't matter what it is. Damn! Yeah. All right, go to select hierarchy. Select hierarchy. Jeez, this thing is a mess, man. What, where you select, select hierarchy. hierarchy. This thing's a mess, man. Oh my god. Imagine the amount of effort that guy had to take. Man, this is this is this is brutal. All right, so you can see when you hit select hierarchy, what it does, what, what does it do when you hit select hierarchy? Anybody know? Go to show joints. Show joints. What the heck? This thing is so crazy. I don't even know what to do. <clears throat> this thing's a mess, man. Wow, I don't know. I don't even know, man. All the way up top. Oh, 
So when I select that exactly. root go and go to select hierarchy, mm -hmm. make sure you go to show joints, turn your joints on. That doesn't select any of the joints in this crocodile. No, it does not. Which is very, very strange. You know what that tells me? Is that this guy's got multiple, um, he's got multiple skeletons in here. And sometimes what riggers will do is they will create two different skeletons and they will have like one set of controls drive one skeleton and then have one skeleton drive the other skeleton. I don't know why they do that. It's very, very complicated. How the hell did that I'm work? I'm, I'm looking through all this. Yeah, so what we need to do is we need to show the joints. So go to show joints and then just drag a box and select some of the joints here. And they'll turn green like this. And then go to select hierarchy. And what that's going to do is that's going to it's going to select a different set of joints, a bunch of crazy joints. And that's going to be the actual hierarchy of the skeleton. Okay, so again, you're just going to drag a box and select some joints in Maya, and then go to select hierarchy. And that will actually select the right hierarchy. Look at all this. There's a big portion at the bottom. Yeah, so that's how, there's, as you can see now when it's selected, there's like joints all over the place. This skeleton's a mess. I ain't going to lie. Do we stick with it or? Uh... No, we're going to stick with it. We're going to fix it. Okay. All right, so right now, all of the keys for this thing are on the actual controls, not the joints. All right, so in Unreal, um, when you export stuff for Unreal, Unreal likes keys on joints, not controls, right? Unreal doesn't know what Maya controls are. So we need to go ahead and bake all of the, um, bake all the keyframes onto the joints that we have selected. All right, so with all of the joints selected here in the hierarchy, go up to Edit, Edit Keys, Bake Simulation. Edit Keys, Bake Simulation. So all right, to get to where I'm at here, you just drag a box over the crocodile here. It'll select the joints. Then you want to select all the hierarchy in there. So go to Select Hierarchy. Then you're going to go to Edit Keys, Bake Simulation. Edit Keys, Bake Simulation. And what that does is it, it, it sets keys on every single keyframe for all of those joints. And when it does that, it's going to break all the controls, which is fine, because we don't, we don't care about these controls. We just care about keys on joints, OK? So with that being said, let's go ahead and wipe out some of these controls. So I want you to go to show none, show curves. So it's just curves. Drag a box over them and delete them. Goodbye. Actually, don't do that. Uh, <laughs> damn. We're done. Suck the turn around. That broke it. You broke it. Yeah, we nice. gotta basically we gotta get this guy. I know what we're gonna do. All right, so we need to we need to export this guy. File, export all. Actually, what? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. I'm. Here's the deal. I, you know. Take your time. Take your time. All right. Here's what we're gonna do. Okay. <laughs> all right. Go to show none. Show polygons. Show none. Show none. Show polygons, and just select all the polygons. All right. Oh wait. Nice. Uh, okay. So we just want the crocodile in here. He's still moving, right? Nice. All right. Select the crocodile. It's not broken up into parts. And then go to File Export Selection. File Export Selection. Okay. Yeah, select the crocodile, export selection, not export all. You with me, Maria? Yeah, are we talking about like tile selection? I'm moving quick here. All right. Now down at the bottom, where it says files of type, change that to FBX. 
Now, one of the cool things about the FBX exporter is that FBX exporters only export bones, animation, and 3D mesh, okay? So we can use an XB FBX exporter to basically clean out a bunch of Maya crap that we don't need, extra Maya crap, right? All right, so in your exporter settings here, um, so again, down at the bottom where it says files of type, change that to FBX export. We're exporting selection. All right, so we need to set our settings here, which we've done a thousand times before. Under geometry, turn on smooth, <coughs> smoothing groups. Under animation, turn off blend shapes. So we're not exporting morph targets. We've done some facial stuff in here, haven't we? Or we did morph target stuff in here, I think. I think we did morph targets. Turn off cameras, turn off lights, turn off audio. Turn on embed media, and then change the advanced options, FBX file format version to FBX uh, 2013. I'll go over those settings one more time. Under geometry, turn smoothing groups on. Under uh, deformed models, make sure blend shapes is turned off. No cameras, no lights, no audio. We want embedded media. Then the last thing, under advanced options, FBX file format, turn on 2013. Export it to your desktop, call it croc, and export. Now, it's going to throw a bunch of errors. That's good. What that means is it's having, having a hard time exporting certain things, which is, that's a good thing. So go ahead and make a new scene, file new scene, and then import that file that we just exported. Damn. I got good news and bad news. What do you want to hear first? The bad news. Bad news? We're done? We're not done. <laughs> We're done with our degree? Hell yeah. All right, so once, once you re-import the croc, look at the hierarchy and tell me what you see. Only the important thing. Damn. Is that not the right answer? That's the right answer. Reimport it. File import. Reimport the file. So when you reimport it, Whoa. open up the hypergraph hierarchy and tell me what you see. Uh, I see a lot. I see miracles. I see a little. I see a lot of little here, which is really, really good news. When you open this up, and you open it up in the hypergraph hierarchy, you see like one-fifth of the crap that was in there. Uh, um, uh, uh, about like one-tenth, but yeah. Did you guys bake your animation? Bank. Raphael, do you see what I see? Yeah. Why is it that Raphael sees what I see and the rest of you don't? What happened? <laughs> okay, so all I told you guys to do was first of all, you export that using the settings that I told you, yeah. then make a new scene, right. and then import that. You did that? Still looks crazy? Nice. Yeah, just do it again. The good news is you saved your scene. So just open that scene back up. You can go down to file, recent files, open up that file. Now I'll run through the steps here. Again. You got it working now? You got it working? What did what 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 went wrong? Did you import? Yeah, make sure you make a new scene. File new. File new scene. Then go to file import, and select the, the croc file that you exported. Seems to be working for people now. It's always a checkbox. That's what we say in the game department here. It's always a checkbox. And when you're done, make sure you open the hypergraph hierarchy, take a look at it, and there should be nothing in there. Well, maybe not nothing, but... Y'all still got that same problem? Nice.
<laughs> All right, let's let's fix y'all's problem. Go to file new scene or go down to file, recent files, and open up the Maya file for the crocodile that looks like this. Okay. Go to show all show all you guys can go to file recent files and it'll show you all the files that you've been recently messing with that's a quick way to open up the crocodile file if you guys have the file open and there's nothing in it, it looks right just wait okay. I'm gonna help these fools fix their file the classroom deck. All right. Uh, go to sh show all. Show all. We've gone over show a million times in this class. You should know where show is by now. All right. Drag a box over the bones. You should have bones selected. Is that right? All right. Once bones are selected, go to s um, select hierarchy. Select hierarchy, then go to edit keys, bake simulation. Make sure your frames are set from 0 to 48. Down at the bottom. Bottom frame should be 48. Bottom right. All right, once that's baked, um, all you got to do is select the crocodile mesh. Select the crocodile mesh. It should The crocodile should turn green. If it doesn't turn green, make sure your layer on the bottom right XINDE layer that R is turned off so you can select the mesh because we turned we made it a reference R is off and select the crocodile so it turns green just one click on the crocodile so it turns green is your crocodile green somebody make sure that crocodile is green Look up on my screen. See this like this? It doesn't, as long as it's green when you select it. If it ain't green, you get, it ain't working. You need to be able to select the actual model of the crocodile. All right, so once the model's selected, go to File, <coughs> Export Selection. Export Selection. All your FBX settings should be in there. Make sure it's on FBX Export. And then re-export it. Then re then make go to file new scene and import that file. This rigging stuff is like very step step oriented so if you miss one little click or check or something it's not going to work what's your name what's your name Me? you david david yeah. you need to help him oh that works i got it okay that's great that you got it but your your neighbor does not got it and he don't ask for help for some reason. So, how about y'all? Do y'all get it? Does your hierarchy look like mine? Yep. Hers doesn't. Oh yeah, it does. Make sure you tap six and make sure that you can see the texture on this guy. Export. 
find close. Make sure you save this. And then file. New thing. File. Import the import what you just brought in. Go find the file. Does anybody need any help? Everybody's screen should look like mine. Trying to get her there. All right. Slowly but surely. Holy moly! My grandma's got this done by now. Go to file. Recent file. Uh, don't save. Okay. Go. Go. Good to go. Good to go. Will somebody help him? He's good. He, he's like, screw it. All right, cool. You still doing stuff, Raphael? I'm trying to get her there. You only get five bucks here to wait for her to. Export. Export to select. Make sure you're saving it in a place where you can find it. How she get Put it back, yeah. Just uh, I'm gonna just leave it in there. Yes, it's all fine. Just save it, plug it on. Yep, export. Export selection. I'm trying to go. Then go to file new. That's fine. Close. New thing. File. Import. Find the crocodile that we just right there. Um, oh, top. FBX. FBX? Yes. Import. What is that little? Listen. From what though? Man, I'm not even on Instagram, fool. Uh, is is she good to go? I while you guys are um while y'all are waiting, we're waiting on Maria here. Um. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about something cool that's happening. Um, what's happening? Uh, so at Richland, we're implementing a transfer program for the game degree, and um, the uh, so there's two tracks in our game degree. Which is the first is our programming track. So if you go to the game website, richlandcollege.edu, click on program and degree. You can see we have two, two tracks for our degree here, <coughs> programming and art, animation, and design. The programming track, uh, most programmers, who, what programmers do we have in here? Any, anybody a programmer? Kind of, sort of? Cool. All right, so for programming, art, animation, and design, we will be doing this soon. But rolling out first for the programmers is a transfer degree that we're doing from UTD. 
I mean, U U N T, which is going to give you guys a bachelor's. Okay, and the cool things about our transfer program that we're rolling out for you guys, and we're going to be rolling this out within the next couple weeks. It's really, really cool. So it's. Um, first of all, they take all of your classes here at Richland, okay. right, which is amazing. They'll take every single one of your Richland classes, all right? So if you do the programming track here, they'll take all that into the degree. The other cool thing is it's heavily game-centric. So basically, like if you do a normal Bachelor of Science degree as a programmer, you're going to be taking dumb classes like data systems and other boring stuff where you're doing calculators. Um, ours is like all game related stuff, which is really cool. The other thing is UNT has their own game program. It's not anywhere near as good as ours. They only have like three or four classes, but they're really cool classes. The guys at UNT, um, the, the head of the program, the game program at UNT, did a lot of the work on um, No Man's Sky. He uh, designed a lot of the tech for No Man's Sky. So not only will you take Richland gaming classes, but you'll take some at UNT. And the other, the other best, really cool thing about this, cheaper. This is a really, really cheap option if you're interested in, in transferring and getting a bachelor's. It's cheap because you can take like over over half of your classes you'll end up taking at Richland and you can even take more additional classes at Richland as well to get your degree cheaper because if you're just to roll into a four-year college and just straight up just pay for all the classes that'd be very very expensive all right so it's really really cool about that so not so it's an incredibly game centric program it's a bachelor's, and it takes all your classes, and it's cheap. What's it called? <laughs> so we have not um, we have not rolled this out yet. I'm just telling you that this is coming, and it's a really cool option for you guys. So right now we're just doing it for the programmers, mm -hmm. but we will be rolling it out for the art, animation, and design track um, within like another month. Too much what? Too many, two more semesters. Now here's the thing. Like if you're an art animation designer uh, track person, the, you really don't need a bachelor's. If you want a bachelor's, great. You have, we're going to have the option for you. But really, if you're one of these guys, concept artist, level designer, modeler, animator, visual effects, um, producer, what, rigger, whatever, um, you really just need a portfolio. Mm -hmm. So if you spend your time here at Richland making a portfolio, we're going to F help you find work okay that's our job here if you want to move on a bit get your bachelor's cool these guys programmers they companies look for programmers that have bachelor's degrees okay so the cool news is is that and we know that so we've been working really hard to make that happen for you guys anyway so we'll be really really um, <coughs> this is a really really good option uh, if you want a bachelor's so anyway I'm gonna be pushing that um, more info about that later, but I'm just letting you know that it's coming. I, we talk, I had a project dev class in here yesterday. I, I told one girl, um, and she started crying, and she left the class. She was so happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because um, we, we've never had a, a, a full-fledged transfer program like this. All right, uh, so we got this crocodile in here. Let's go ahead and keep, keep moving with this guy. Um, so open up the hypergraph hierarchy. Let's take a look at what we got. So the good news is Maya cleaned a lot of this, but it didn't clean it all. So we got to do a few other little things here, okay? What other crap do you see on the skeleton here? Yeah, there's three things on top. There's a group, main, and deformation system. Y'all's might be named a little bit different than mine. Um, what we want to do is unparent the root from those three top nodes that don't mean nothing. So click on the root and then tap shift P. Click on the root root and tap shift P. And that's going to remove 
that. So basically, we just want the joints kind of floating in space here. So Shift P is unparent. All right. Then you can delete those things. And then I want you to, you'll see that the mesh is the next thing to the left over here. It's named E Y U colon A N N P C Mob Croc blah 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 blah. I want you to rename that to just Croc. Just rename that to Croc, because oftentimes really long names like this can cause a lot of problems. So just right click on it, rename Croc. Okay. So now look down your bone structure here. And all we should have in this scene is just mesh and bones. That's it. And it should still animate. We've ripped off all the controls and made this real simple. Unreal shouldn't have any problems with this. OK? All right. Now let's go ahead and export this animation. Um, I think we determined that, like, 47 was a good way to do that. So change your frame range to 47. Change that frame range to 47. And then let's go ahead and save this scene. File, save scene as. And you can just call this one clean. I'll save scene as and just call this one clean. Now we need to export it again. So uh, this time you can just go file export all because we're confident that in the scene we know everything that's in the scene. It's cleaned. File export all, make sure it's FBX. And we're going to call this walk. Make sure bake animation is turned on under animation settings. Are uh, all the other take the same? Uh, yep. File, export all. Make sure it's FBX. Yeah, you're going to leave all the checkboxes saved as is. The only thing that you're going to make sure is turned on is bake animation. And it should say 0 to frame 47. So this time we're going to bake the animation. File export all. You could also do export selection, but it's just easier to just go export all. You don't have to select anything. When you're done checking bake animation, go ahead and export this and call it walk. Or croc walk, it doesn't matter. Make sure you save your scene. And I, uh, oh, no. no, wait, no, I saved it as a mine and then I exported it as FBX. Yeah. Alright, so we've exported the, the walk animation. Now we need to export the actual crocodile. Those are two separate files, okay? Animation is different from the character file. So what I want you to do is select the bones, drag a box, select the bones, and change the drop down up in the top left to rigging. Then I want you to go to skin, go to bind pose. Skin, god this thing is a mess. This thing is a mess, man. That tail, that tail though. You know what? It don't even matter. Don't even worry about that. Let's just go into Unreal. <laughs> okay. This thing's such a mess, it really, it just doesn't even matter. All right, so inside Unreal, under content, make a new folder, call it Croc. G 
genius. Inside the croc folder, click import. You're going to import that file. I think mine was called walk. <coughs> and just go ahead and click import all. Tiny man. All right, uh, this this gator is tiny. That's a problem. We gotta fix that. Damn! Look at this guy, tiny. All right, cool. So, so first things first. Um, in the content editor here, you'll notice that the pink file. You'll see that at the bottom, these files are like color coded. Okay, as you can see, the material here is green. Let's go ahead and change the name of that material to um, Croc Matte. All right, then the texture is red. Change the texture name to Croc Tex. Then where it says walk, that's pink. That's actually a model file or a character file. Let's call that Croc. Where it says walk anim, just change that to walk. Walk physics, you can just remove the prefix that says, just keep it physics asset. And then walk skeleton, just change that to skeleton. So we just want to name these kind of appropriately here. Just a little house cleaning. And you can look up at the top and see my names here. Just kind of clean it up a little bit. This one? This one? This one? Yeah. That's the animation. Did you turn on bake animation when you exported? Go to file export all? No, because uh, for some reason it keeps unchecking the import animation when you bring it to Unreal. Okay, Okay. when you import, what, what's the checkbox called? Uh, import animation. Make sure import animation is <coughs> turned on. You just delete the files that you imported. Got it? Yep. All right. So once you renamed all your stuff, uh, we need to make sure that this guy's big because right now he's tiny. Uh, bigger, oh, okay. Well, we're going to re-import it, make sure it's imported properly, all right? So double-click on the crocodile, the pink one here. Should look like this. Friggin' tiny, man. Now on the left-hand side, scroll all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> on the left hand side scroll all the way down now at the bottom under import settings you'll see something that says import uniform scale right now it's set to one import uniform scale this is the settings that it uses to import the scale when we import this change that to 10 then click the button at the top that says reimport mesh. Whoa! 
That seems pretty good. Think so? What do you think? Should we make it bigger? This is the game here. What do you, what do you think? Look at these other models. A tiny tad bit? All right, let's go with 15. Like that? All right, let's go with 15. So once you change scale to 15 and click reimport, then go ahead and click the save button. Make sure it's saved. And we got a problem though. Click on the walk animation. What happens? Oh my god, why is it tiny? We scaled him up. That's right. Got to do the same thing that you just did on the walk animation. So double click that walk animation, scroll down on the left, look for import uniform scale. What number are we putting in there? 15. Click 15 and click reimport animation. So we got to reimport the animation as well because it imports that separately. Import that, click save. Rock and roll. Nice. Now, what do you guys think about that animation? Is that too slow? It looks really slow. Damn. So how do we make that faster? Anybody know? What's the quick way? I'll tell you what. The quick way is double click that, that walking animation. On the left hand side, you'll see something that says rate scale. Well, let's just, let's just make it faster. Let's just turn it to two. Whoa. Is that too fast? 1.5. 1.5. Perfect. Hit save on that. All right, my own real crime. Nice. <laughs> Too, fast. Too fast. That's too fast, you think? Really? Nah, that's good. That's fine. That's good, fam. I want to show you guys a trick. A trick, he says. Yeah, check this out. <laughs> so if you guys, uh, you can drag the walk animation into your scene. Yeah. Damn. Whoa, damn, man, calm down. Sorry. And if you drag the walk animation into your scene, um, you can just run over there and the dude will be walking. And you can see how big he is compared to your character, which is pretty cool in case you want to scale him even more or whatever. <laughs> um, for you SVN guys, actually never mind. All right, cool, uh, guys. That's it for today. That was all we were gonna do.